Katrina, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Where are we talking from? I am in my apartment in New York City. Uh, uh, I call it upstate Manhattan. I'm near the DW Bridge. I have not been outside in eight days. Uh, <laughs> I, the last time I was out was to take supplies to a friend who lives very close by who was sick. Uh, Technically, since my show canceled its rehearsals, uh, I was supposed to be in Classic Stage Company's production of Assassins. Uh, we would have previewed on Thursday. We would have started previews. Um, uh, Thursday, the uh, whatever the date would have been, the 2nd, the 1st of April. Um, anyway, uh, I have not really been outside since we canceled rehearsals. So it's, it's been, I'm taking it seriously. They say, don't go out. So I'm not. Um, well, I'm th very thankful that, that some people are taking it seriously. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of others are yeah. not still, uh, which is just making it worse. But I can't help but, but ignore the fact that you're saying that you're in your apartment, yet I'm staring at about 30 accordions right behind you. Yes, there are actually 34 in the apartment. 34. So that was a very good guess. You're, you're only seeing a few of them. There's more on the floor behind me. There's some behind the computer. Uh, they're, they're sort of strewn everywhere. Um, yeah, this is an instrument that is that has become very special to me. And uh, yeah, to tell you a little bit about that. Um, I'd, love, I'd love that because sure, I know nothing sure. about it, except that it looks a little bit like a mini piano and I yes. know that it's not. So well, that's why it, it definitely had a, a, a great surge in popularity, especially as people were immigrating to the United States and they wanted to bring, you know, the accordion is a portable piano and it's a great way to bring a bit of one's culture. So isn't you know, the same fingering as a piano? Yeah, yeah, it's the same over here. There are other ones. There's a gold one right here that you can't quite see, but it has buttons. So it's a little bit of a different system. But the piano is very, very popular. Uh, it's sort of lost a little bit of its, its uh, life uh, when synthesizers made an appearance, because then that was something else. Uh, but now I, I feel like it's sort of having another moment um, when you've got people like Weird Al, who are incredible accordionists, who really? are... Doing, yeah, he's an incredible accordionist. Uh, but there are, it's still very, very popular in, in many different countries, but I feel like it's sort of having a resurgence here. And I know Josh Groban really helped that in uh, Great <laughs> Comet all, with all his followers. They were like, yay, the accordion is cool. So, which I love that. But um, my grandmother played accordion. Oh, and, wow. Uh, she toured singing gospel music uh, with her sister at, wow. who played guitar. So the accordion was around, it, it came out occasionally. I, I definitely didn't quite have the same fondness then that I do now for it. But uh, when I booked my first Broadway show uh, many years ago, I played uh, a lot of instruments and they asked me if I could cover the accordion in the show. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I play piano. I've played piano since I could move. And uh, it, it was, when I picked it up, I was like, wow, this is such a great instrument. Why didn't I take it seriously? Because this this hand of this, this massive set of buttons over here felt very uh, just daunting. But then when I learned what it was in a few quick patterns, I was like, wow, this is amazing. But I have to, to say that I was born into a family, not just my grandmother, but my parents had a band. So I didn't have a choice when it came to doing music. I, it was a requirement. So drum lessons, piano lessons, and then uh, we well, it's were- it's kind of worked out, I think. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely worked out. But uh, eventually when we had to choose an instrument in school, I, I wanted to play violin. There wasn't a string program. So my mother took me to hear an orchestra and a woman stood up and played a note. And I didn't even care what the instrument was. I was like, that one. It turns out it was the oboe, which became my major in college. So I went on to play all the winds, some brass, some strings. And, but this, this is the one that, that has sort of just really, I've latched onto it. Before my, my grandmother passed away, she had Alzheimer's and dementia. She didn't really know a lot, of, a lot of people. And there was a real defining moment where my dad said, hey, you know, why don't you come home? From New York and visit it and maybe play a little accordion for grandma and in the moment that I was there it was the amount of clarity that she had for um everybody that's uh oh sorry there must be, did I lose you no we're oh, okay here. it for some reason it, it um it put you to the side of my screen anyway um it, uh, I had her for a moment uh, in the room and she asked if she could have the instrument and play it. And it was, everybody was just like, whoa. And I was like, wow, 
uh, this is something I need to take seriously. Music is a key. It's, it's, yeah. It unlocks different doors in our, in our, our minds and our bodies. It was such a visceral reaction that she had to hearing the instrument that, um, and I don't know if anybody else was maybe as aware. I mean, they'd all heard grandma play the accordion so many times, but yeah. I feel like for me, it was like, oh, I need to take this seriously. And then shortly thereafter, I stumbled into an accordion shop in New York. I wanted to buy a good one. And I met a man named Walter Kerr, who uh, became a friend, a mentor, a band leader. And I play, uh, he's since passed, um, but he had the Main Squeeze Orchestra, which is anywhere between 12 and 18 women. And it's all accordion. And we're usually in uh, uniforms and, and we play a multitude of different styles. We've still kept it up, uh, but Walter's shop was called the Main Squeeze, Main Squeeze Accordions. And I have taken it over. So I'm starting a business wow. uh, with uh, his, his girlfriend's permission. And I am Main Squeeze Accordions Inc. now. And wow. uh, yeah, there's not, there's not a shop in Manhattan. Uh, there are a few people in various places uh, in some of the other boroughs um, that do some repair work. But there's nobody in Manhattan. And I love it so much that I, I mean, have to do pretty, this. It's, first of all, uh, you know, watching you, I watched you quite a few times in The Great Comet. And uh, so the, the passion for, for what oh, you're yeah. doing is, it's just unbelievable. And, and I have to ask, because I still don't understand how, how it can be, that you play and you perform eight shows a week. Yes. On the, one of the most prestigious stages in the world. And you can still come with the amount of excitement and passion that you personally come with. How does that even work? Tell me a little bit about this experience of performing and then performing with one of your favorite instruments. Yeah, you know, I mean... What a gift art is. I mean, look at, look at what we're going through right now. For anybody in the world that could possibly suggest that we shouldn't have funding for artists, everyone's at home right now. Everyone's watching, you know, Netflix or, or, or watching their TV shows or, you know, yeah. Hulu. And those are all artists. And now I understand that Andrew Lloyd Webber is going to start streaming his shows on Friday nights. Like there's like all of this art. You can, you can take tours of museums, all of these art related things are saying here we will hold you during this time so i feel like i've always sort of felt that way about music in general that it really it it does something to us that lifts us up uh, i volunteer for an organization called artists striving to end poverty mm -hmm. and i've traveled to ecuador uh to work with them for a few months and i've been to india with them as well uh to serve under uh, i shouldn't say to serve um to work with perhaps underserved communities that's what I should say. Uh, and they believe that through the arts, we can empower the minds of people to, yeah. to help them just navigate life in the most difficult situations. And so I'm so on board with that. So the idea that I could ever take for granted doing eight shows a week, also, I just would like to um, say that I'm the only person that didn't miss a show. You didn't miss a single show? I didn't want to ever not be there. Wait, wait, wait. And how long were you there for? How long did it, how long were you a part of the of the Broadway cast? I think we did eleven months. Is that so right? for eleven months, you did eight shows a week, and you didn't miss a single show. Well, we would have opened. We would have started previews in November. So I mean, essentially, whatever the length of the run was, I didn't miss a show. And there was one other person, and the only reason he missed a show was because he got swung out to watch to watch the show for a principal role that he was covering. But he and I are the only ones that, that were never not in the building. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it was so important to me. And anyone who you, know, you would talk to from Great Comet will tell you that I, I really tried to take care of myself that year. It was important to me to do that. I mean, you know, I, I am a person who have a glass of wine here or there, but I didn't that year. I mean, I literally, I, it was about being as getting, I was also in school. I was finishing school at Berkeley at the same time. What? So yes. So schedule was everything. So um, we closed Great Comet and two weeks later, I graduated from Berkeley, which was insane, but uh, Berkeley in the other side of the, the country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so I had a really, a really strong routine that involved an exact amount of sleep, exact amount of study, and definitely eating the right foods and not putting myself in a position where I would risk my health to not do the show. I want to do the show, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot, 
I'm honestly, I'm not that keen with, with, the, with the world, but I know a lot of people who go through the experience of, of being in Broadway and the arts, it, it really takes a, a tremendous toll on your body, yes. both physically being on stage and, and running around and dancing, especially for a show like Great Comet and whoever doesn't know about it, it's, it's, the, it's not just a regular show where you have a stage that's, you know, I don't know, uh, 15 meters long. You're basically running around the whole, yes. the whole theater. I don't know, yes. it's like more than a thousand seats and you're literally running around and rattling everybody up. Yes. Yeah, so how, how is that? How, how was that whole experience? Oh my, it's, you know, I joined in the tent. Yeah. So I joined in a smaller space and was so taken with the show and especially the music. Oh, the music is just unbelievable. I mean, to take 70 pages of a glorious story and make that, I mean, that's just gorgeous but based um, on war and peace yeah i will say i feel like compared to some of the other people uh in the cast perhaps i didn't have to do as much running because some of the some of the moments that i had were where actually I needed to be near your brother or you know to hear or whatever but um i i don't know that I ran around as much as maybe some other people, which probably helped protect well, my you body. Well, kind of you kind of had to hold an accordion for oh, a lot yeah. of it. Yes, and but, but you, also... You play other instruments, right? I play a lot of instruments, yeah. I mean... But also at the show. Uh, no, just accordion for that. Yeah, just accordion. Yeah, just that. In the tent, I played glockenspiel. I think that's it. But <laughs> um, I know, isn't that funny? Uh, yeah, but... And actually, before... The, uh, the assistant musical director called me before we started rehearsals and said, do you have a preference in accordion? And I said, 100%, this is what it has to weigh. It has to be no more than this or else it will cause problems for our backs and our bodies. And the, the other accordionist in the show, I think she was a little disappointed that I chose a smaller model, but I was like, trust me, you, you will thank me later. It is all you need and, and uh, she, later, of course, she was like, yeah, thank God that's all we had because that was like, you know, it was, it was, it was definitely enough. But, you know, when you sit on stage, especially in that kind of atmosphere, you're, we were very close to people. So I was watching other people experience the art in real time. Yeah. And there's something really lovely about a shared experience. That's why I think so many of us in New York are just well, it feels so weird that there's no theater right now. There's no music. There's, that's why so many people are doing these wonderful things online to try to find a, find a voice to, to use their art. Because totally. shared experiences like that are, are really, really important. And they even say for, for little kids that, you know, that kind of musical shared experience is, is crucial for their development, you know? So, totally. yeah, but so. It was, it was it's so emotional. I have to say that, you know, I, I, saw, the, I saw the show so many times and I got so emotional every time. And one of the most amazing things that I haven't seen in any other show is watching the cast yeah. on stage. You know, there, yeah. were, there were actors that were crying every single show at the end. Yeah, I mean, I was one of those people. I have to say that um, there was a moment as the show, as act two started, uh, where Britain would sing Sonia alone. And uh, it, I didn't play in that song but I played in the next song and I wanted so desperately to be allowed to stay on stage to watch her sing it every night that I convinced Rachel Chafkin that I could wear the accordion as a backpack. And I was like, no, no, I'll just come on with it and then I'll have it and I just will have it. So I'm ready to go. You just put me anywhere and then I'll be ready to play the next song. So I didn't leave the stage, which meant that I got to watch Sonia alone every night with your brother right in front of me, literally right in front of me. And then looking at Britain, it was the best gift of the year i mean just just stunning so and and many of us were pretty moved every day by the show of course there are moments where you know your body doesn't feel as great or something's happened outside of the show but yeah the the, the thing with the the theater is the goal is to walk in and set that aside because this is this is a hopefully the art will tap into a different part of your brain and latch onto it and take you on this ride that that takes away whatever else might be going on, you know, in, in your, in your life. I know it was for me. I'd be like, Oh, I don't have to think about that project at Berkeley. Cause I'm going to do a show. So, you know, it's, it was very Broadway. Do yeah. you get nervous at all? Oh God. Yeah. 
And I swear it only gets worse. What? Especially auditioning. Oh, it's the worst. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at auditioning. And, you know, despite what my resume could imply, I, it is one of my least favorite things to do, it, to walk into a room and have to prove to people that somehow I'm worthy of that thing, that piece of paper that I've handed them. And I hate it. And, and often, you know, I majored in oboe and like my fingers will shake before I go to play the instrument that I played. So I will say, I mean, I'm sure there are people that have their method, that have their methods to, you know, have their sort of anxiety abated, but I don't use any methods except just to try to breathe and go in there and smile and hopefully, you know, that it happens. But I do get nervous before shows um, because anything is possible. You can't, you can't shut down for a minute. You have to be present to all of it. Anything can happen at any moment. So, yeah. You know, you're not paying attention and you trip with a accordion on your front, you fall, like that's not good. So it's, you know, it, it involved a huge amount of paying attention. Also, we have a strobe light sequence, like, yeah. <laughs> which honestly was one of my favorite things to do of all time. It's inc- I mean, from the audience, it's incredible. Yeah. So how did you get to, to Broadway? Because, you know, you're playing the piano since inception yeah. and then you yeah, yeah. feature an oboe, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. not the most common. Uh, Correct. Thing. I don't Correct. know how many Broadway actresses and actors have majored in an instrument. In college. Yeah, well, I, I feel like it's becoming more common to have people who do both. But, and especially it's been that way in England for a long time. They've got a... a an actor muso, as they call them, it's there have been degrees of people doing that and for quite some time. Um, I also studied dance and mm-hmm. gymnastics. And uh, earlier in my life, I was, I'd be more likely to go to the dancer call than the singer call. So my first, some of my first jobs were as a dancer. And uh, I went on tour with a national production of Victor Victorious, starring Tony Tennille. Um, of Captain Antonio fame, the love will keep us together. That's Captain Antonio. I went on tour with, with uh, her in a show and uh, somebody said, oh, hey, there's this um, little Broadway show, not little, but uh, where they need people who can play instruments. And it, somebody was like, don't you like play the oboe or something? And I was like, yeah. So on the Christmas break in 1998, I <laughs> went home and made a cassette tape I borrowed a flute from my brother. I borrowed my sister's saxophone. I borrowed a clarinet from somebody that my parents knew at their church. I borrowed my brother's trumpet and I made a cassette tape. I think I put oboe on it. I think I might have, I I actually don't remember, but, um, and I sent it off to uh, the roundabout casting offices and sure enough, somebody opened that thing. I don't know if they ever listened to it, but they called me in and I had six auditions and wow. eventually booked it, coming back and forth from New York while I was on tour. Uh, and yeah, so I, I booked my first Broadway show and it was, it was pretty young, but the, the skill of- um, the How old were you? I was 22. Wow. Yeah, so the, the skill of playing instruments is, is not only do I love it, it's just been the best gift. And, and often people have said, oh, don't you just want to be an actor or a singer? And I'm like, no, I love playing. It's like, it's an extension of my thought. It's extension of my voice, my, my body. It's, it's, I, want, I want to play and I, I love it. I, I know that I'm completely putting, putting you on the spot. So feel free to decline. Is there any way that I could get like a 20 second snippet of how, of how it sounds like? And uh, what? Oh, yeah. Um, shoot. Let me find the closest one. Okay. All right. This is one that I bought and that I'm going to sell. I have to put you down for a second to put it on. I'll be right back. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. So this one was kind of an experiment. Um, I've been going to Italy and Germany to study accordion repair and I'm, uh, I was just in Italy, uh, right before all this chaos happened actually. And, um, I'm learning different techniques in terms of the repair so that I can offer more 
services to people. And one of those is, is a lot of body repair. Sorry if you're getting a lot of extraneous noise. My computer speakers are not great right now. Anyway, this is one that I've worked on some tuning for. And, uh, okay, that's undone. Let's see what it was switch right now. Can you hear it through my, uh, okay. Perfect. All right, let's see what's sitting around here. Is it super loud for you? No, 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 it's perfect. I mean, it's like, it's so cool. It is, it's a great instrument. This is a smaller one in terms of its settings, but it's got like, someone should buy this one. I'm going to sell it for about 150 bucks if anybody wants to buy it. So, uh, but it's one of the ones I'm repairing. It's a shame that I don't have a, a good one out and accessible for you. But no, no, um, no, you're not. That, is, that is perfect. And honestly, <laughs> Whoever is interested needs to go to New York and see and see a Broadway show that you're on. That's ah, that's, that's you're so sweet. You're so sweet. But also, uh, you know, if anybody uh, if anybody gets in touch with me, I will convince you somehow to want to play the accordion. So, <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been a uh, uh, a joy of mine to to try to get people who have played piano to take interest in this because it's portable and it's it's great. So I have many of them that are. Uh, and varying degrees of repair here that I plan to sell to people that I can get on board with this squeeze box. Wonderful. <laughs> Katrina, before we go, I yeah. want you to tell me three words that you think could describe you best. Ooh. Um, passionate. Productive. Yes. Um, passionate, productive, and like not just one word full of gratitude what's how do you say full of gratitude i'll take full of gratitude as the third word yeah yeah wonderful katrina yeah. thank you so so much this of is wonderful course. yeah well i can't wait to check your series and and uh check out the other people i'm so excited you said you're going to interview a farmer and i all i want to do is learn about plants right now so that's like that's it's super awesome fantastic. yeah thank you so good. much and, and stay safe stay healthy thank you Thank you.